Right guys, in today's video, I'll be comparing five drivers. They're all pretty recent. 551.23, 546.33, 546.29, 537.58, and 537.34. Before I get to my results, please, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. And then on my homepage, I have a whole bunch of videos on how to unlock undervolting and reduce temperatures. You can go wild on my homepage there, but you want to see those driver results. So let's get to the results. So all my games are tested at medium settings, except for the newer titles. I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. So uh, games from 2023 generally are at low settings. All my games are single player. I don't test online. I just find the results all over the place. I use FSR 2.0 or 2.1 on the quality setting where, when it's available. And then lastly, as mentioned, I do test on a GTX 1650 laptop. So if you've got an RTX 3060 and up, you might find that uh, the way the driver interacts with your GPU might be different because RTX obviously is a much more powerful and newer technology. But anything below RTX 3060 um, down to GTX, your results should be similar to mine. So guys, I'm going to start with the oldest driver. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 590, that's 537.34. When I add up all the 1% lows, get to 433. When I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 316. So um, what you'll notice here is the trend is that the older drivers start falling off and the performance starts getting worse. A very popular driver is 537.58 because it has got very good latency. But in terms of the performance and stability, it's not really a driver that I'd recommend anymore. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 594, so slightly better than 537.34. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 432, so it's actually a little bit worse than 537.34. And when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 329. So in terms of status, probably a little bit better than 537.34. Then we move on to a more, a more recent driver, 546.29. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 594, so pretty good result there. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 438, so the best so far. And when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 341. Then a driver that I did recommend up until uh, the latest driver, 546.33. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 593, so quite a good result there. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 440, so so far the most stable. And when I add up all the 0.1% lows, I get to 348. So in terms of 1% lows and 0.1% lows, so far out of the drivers tested, 546.33 is looking good. But then we get to the latest driver. I'm a big fanboy of the latest driver, 551.23. When I add up all the average FPS, I get to 598. So by far the best average FPS over the games I tested. When I add up all the 1% lows, I get to 447. So this completely blows the competition out of the water. It's got, um, I find that 551 is by far the most stable driver, uh, even better than my previous favorite 546.33. And when I add up all the 0.1% lows, the trend continues. I get 362 of the games I tested. So guys, if you want my recommendation, it's pretty obvious, 551.23 is the driver to be using currently. It's, as you can see, it's got the best average FPS, it's got the best 1% lows, and it's got the best 0.1% lows. But those are my two cents. Guys, um, there's a chance that this might be my last video for quite some time. Got some stuff I need to sort out. If it is, I will keep on posting in my community tab. I just might not be making videos, uh, but I'll get to that if that does occur in the next couple of days. Other than that, thanks for watching. Smash that like button. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But most importantly, have a good uh, day and have a good week next, tomorrow. Thanks for your time. Cheers, bye.